Hello everyone! In today's video we are going to play with the geometry node. More specifically, I'm going to show you how you can create a rail section or a generic I-beam steel section, like we would do if we were to model the profile ourselves. We are going to take advantage of the symmetry of the profile, but instead of applying the default symmetry modifier provided by Blender, we will implement one ourselves using the geometry nodes. I am sure that this mirror node group will come in handy for many of our future projects. As usual, let's start by opening Blender and creating a new scene. This time, we are going to keep the default objects and apply a geometry node modifier to the default cube. To do that, we select the cube and in the modifier tab on the right, we click Add Modifier and select the Geometry Nodes. Now we are ready to switch to the Geometry Node workspace. But before starting to play with the nodes, we are going to change the default spreadsheet editor for an image editor. It's always a good idea to have some reference image, so we are going to load one in the editor. In this video, we are going to create the rail section quick and dirty, taking advantage that the internal faces of the profile are not flat and that most rail tracks use the same standard profile. In the next video, instead, we will properly create a parametric profile generator to suit most of our needs, at least in regard of the metal carpentry, that is. Let's start the creation of our profile with a new curve line. Since most likely we want a profile to extrude along another curve, we want to create the cross section profile on the XY plane and, in the case of a rail profile, having the base of the cross section on the origin will come in handy. So we will leave the start point of the line at the origin and put the end point at zero for the X and the Z component while for the Y component, we will use the height of our profile. Wait, we could use some control parameters to set the dimension of our profile. To do that, we drag the socket of the endpoint on an empty spot and in the search menu that Blender we will show us, we type combine and select combine XYZ to create a new node. In the Y component, we type again the default value that happened to be the standard height of a rail profile. In this way, when we drag the empty socket in the group input node and connect it to the Y socket, Blender will automatically create a control parameter and will use the value that we have already put in as default value. Now, if we press the N key, while in the node editor, Blender will show us the right control panel, where in the group tab, we can rename the newly created parameter and set a minimum value of zero. While we are at it, we can create a second input parameter to control the width of the profile. We set the default value to 0.15 and the minimum value to zero. To turn this straight line into our profile, or more precisely, half of our profile, we add a geometry set position node. And in between the line node and the set position node, we add a resample node to create additional points, or otherwise, despite our best efforts, the resulting profile will be as flat as a straight line. Now, as before, we drag the offset socket of our set position node onto an empty spot and create another combined XYZ node. This time we set the Y component to zero and we drag the X component onto an empty spot. And in the search menu, we type float and select float curve. We will use this curve to define the general shape of the profile in a quick way using its control points. Before doing that, we drag the value socket onto an empty spot and in the search menu that pop up when we drop the mouse button, we type factor and select spline parameter factor. 
The factor of a spline is like a local coordinate that starts at zero at the beginning of the curve and ends at one at the end of the curve. This comes in handy because it maps directly with the range of the float curve and so we don't have to worry about the true length of the curve. Now that we have set the general shape of the profile using the float curve control points, we have started seeing some results, but we are not quite finished yet. Since the float curve output is in the range 0, 1, we have to address the width of the profile by multiplying the output with a new math node. Now, if we increase the number of points in the resample curve node, we can improve the shape of the profile. And since we are modeling only half of our profile, we have also to use only half the width. To do that, we add another math node with the divide operation. This is crude but effective. Nice, we are halfway there, almost literally. Now, to reach our goal for this video, we have to mirror our curve to create the desired profile. We start by adding another set position node and an input position node. The simplest way that we could use to mirror our profile would be to add a multiply vector node, connect our position in one slot, and type a factor of negative 1 on the x component of the other vector while typing 1 in the y and z components that will mirror the profile in the x direction using the origin as center point. But I want to create a mirror group that could be used to mirror along any direction and using an arbitrary pivot point. To do that, we start by adding a vector math node with the subtract operation and an input vector node that we will use to set the center point or pivot of the mirror modifier. We connect these nodes to subtract the center point from the position point. In this way, we transform the absolute coordinate of the position, that by definition is measured from the origin, into a relative coordinate measured from the center point that we will specify. Now, we add a second input vector node that we will use to set the direction of the mirror modifier. Then we add a new vector math node with the operation set to dot product. Now we connect the direction vector to the second slot of the dot product and set the direction to x1. To footer proof of node setup, we add a normalize operation on the direction vector, so in the future, when we change it, we don't have to worry about its length. The dot product operation between two vectors give us the projection of the first vector along the second vector, provided that the second vector has a length of 1. Otherwise, the result will be simply multiplied by the length of the second vector. This is equivalent to measuring the distance between the position of a vertex of our mesh or curve and the mirror plane, defined by the center point and the direction. Now, if we use the multiply vector operation and multiply the distance by the normalized direction, we obtain a vector that represents the displacement that we have to subtract to each vertex to bring it on the mirror plane. Now, if we add back the center of our mirror plane, we will see our curve flattened onto the mirror. Something's wrong. Maybe if we connect it properly, even if it doesn't look like it, it's an improvement. Now, if we just multiply by 2 the distance from the vertex to the mirror, we will obtain our mirrored curve. Now, we can add a join geometry node to add back our original curve. Now, we can group these nodes using the layout rewrote node to avoid double inputs. Apparently, despite our best efforts, we created a double input, but we can fix it quickly. And since we are at it, 
we can rename and sort the input parameters. Now let's test what we have accomplished so far. Now we still need to connect and close the two valves of our profile into a single continuous curve. To do that, we start by adding a new curve circle. Then we use a domain size node to read the number of points of our original curve. If we connect the point count output to the resolution input of our circle curve, we obtain a circle that has the same number of points of half our profile. Then we need to multiply by 2 the number of points. Now we use a new switch node to control the output of our mirror. Now if we drag the empty socket of our group input into the switch control socket, we will create a control parameter that will allow us to switch between the two separate curves or the new closed profile. Let's go back and test the switch. Well, close is close, but it's no longer our profile, or not yet to be precise. Now let's go back and add another set position node. Now we need a switch vector node. To control it, we use the index and check if it's less than the point count. Now we can use the transfer attribute node set to operate on vector and by index to read the position of the points of the mirrored half curve. Now, if we connect it to the true input of the switch, we will copy the mirrored half profile to half of our circle. Now, we can use a reverse curve node to invert the order of the points in our original curve. In this way, when we will transfer the position of the original curve points to the second half of their circle, we will preserve the clockwise orientation. Now, to transfer these points, we use another transfer attribute node, but this time we need to modify the index by subtracting the point count of the original curve. Finally, when we connect the output of the transfer attribute node to the false input of the switch node, we complete our full profile. Now we can go back and test the result by using a field curve node. Now that we have achieved the main goal of this video, we can go on with a quick time lapse. The next logical step is to make a rail track. First, we create a spiral curve and then we use the curve to mesh node to create a rail along this spiral. We use the translation parameter of the transform node to create an offset. In this way, we can extrude the left and the right rail using the same path. We can create the sleeper using a cube and then using the resample node we can create the points along the track to feed into the instance on point node. Then using the align Euler to vector node we can set the rotation of the sleeper to align them to the track using the curve tangent node. Then Using the technique that I will explain you in the next video, we can create the joints between the sleeper and the trap. This method consists in using the set position node to change the vertex positions of a curve, but instead of using a float curve or a vector curve as we did before, we daisy chain a series of switch nodes to set the individual coordinates of each vertex. In this way, not only we can control the positions of the vertex, but also 
their exact number. Once we have created half of the base plate of our joint, then we can reuse our mirror node group to take advantage of the symmetry of the joints. Once again, using the curve to mesh node, we can extrude this profile to create our joint base plate. With the same technique, we create the clamps. Once we have defined the profile, we can use the fillet curve node to add more detail. This time, in the mirror modifier, we don't turn on the option to join the two halves of the curve. In this way, we obtain two separate curves that are one the mirror of the other. Finally, using two cylinders, we create the bolts. We use one cylinder to create the stem and another cylinder with the number of sides set to six to create the nuts. Our mirror modifier can be used not only to mirror curve, but also entire meshes like our bolts. Now we can add some more details by adding the locking washers and then as we did for the sleepers we use an instance on point node that fits on our sampled curve to instance the joints on each sleeper and I think that's all for today as I mentioned earlier in the next video, we will discuss the techniques that we can use to create detailed profiles and set different fillet radius on different parts of the curve. Bye bye!